Welcome back, everybody. We're going to continue our lesson on tangent, normal, and binormal vectors for calculus three. Uh, let's just jump right into it with some examples. The algebra can get tedious here. Okay, so I'll try to go to reasonable clip. You can always fast forward it if you need to. Uh, we're going to start with our example uh, using cosine t, sine t, and t for r. Uh, so our first derivative is r prime. Uh, we take the derivative, we have negative sine t, cosine t, and one. If you take the magnitude of r prime, uh, you gotta have the, the square root of sine squared plus cosine squared plus one equals square root of two. So we can find our tangent vector by dividing r prime by its magnitude, and we get the tangent vector is this. We can put it under each individually, or we can pull it out front. Uh, from here, we need to calculate the first derivative of the tangent vector. Uh, so uh, sine goes to cosine. I've got negative cosine over the square root of 2. Uh, the cosine goes to negative sine. So for the y component, we have negative sine over the square root of 2. And 0 for our final value. 1 over root 2, the derivative is 0. Uh, we got to find the magnitude of this. So we square it. We get cosine squared t over 2 and sine squared t over 2. We put them together. We just get the square root of 1 half, which is 1 over root 2. Uh, so when we divide t prime by 1 over root 2, the root 2s kind of go away. And our normal vector is just negative cosine and negative sine. Uh, now we're going to use t and n here to find b. Uh, so let's do our cross product here. <clears throat> I end up in the i component, just minus a negative sign gives me plus sign. And then when we do the j component, we have a minus already. Uh, and then I've got minus a negative cosine, minus a negative makes a positive cosine, but then we have the negative from the j vector part of it. Uh, so negative cosine for our j component. And when we do these, you'll notice we get sine squared and cosine squared, both of them with a one over root two. That can simplify uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So this becomes one over root two. And our B vector is sine of t, negative cosine of t, and 1 over root 2. <clears throat> OK. Uh, oop. I wanted to do a little bit of work and show you, make sure, you know, point out that these are all orthogonal. If you do B dotted with T, B dotted with N, or T dotted with N, you will find when you go through these calculations that equal, each of them equals 0. In the interest of saving time, I won't go through this. You can do it on your own uh, to verify it or pause the video and look. OK. So now let's take a look at doing this using S. So a quick recap what we would do using S. Uh, we got to convert to arc length. Then we're going to calculate the first and second derivative and the magnitude of the second derivative. Uh, and that's all we really need. Then we'll use the first derivative to find the tangent vector, the second derivative over its magnitude to find the uh, normal vector. And we can either do r prime s cross with the second derivative divided by, by the magnitude, or we can do t cross n. And I think it all just depends on how they look for me, uh, which is going to look like more work. Uh, Either works here. So when I see what these vectors look like and what these vectors look like, I'll decide, it's still a cross product, I'll decide which one I want to do. <clears throat> so same vector, same problem. We should end up with something that looks somewhat similar. Uh, so we always need to find out the first derivative. Uh, and it's really its magnitude, the magnitude of its first derivative. That's what we use for arc length. So we're going to plug that in. We found the first derivative was square root of 2 for all t. Uh, so we find s. 
we plug in, this is square root of two. So when we integrate, we get, and we use a dummy variable u to do it. We integrate, we get u times the square root of two evaluated from zero to t. And this just leaves us t root two equals s. And so t equals s over square root of two. <clears throat> okay. We take those, we plug it in, we get r. So rather than having cosine t, we've got cosine s over root two, sine of s over root two, and s over root two. Uh, first derivative doesn't change too much other than we have to take it as a chain rule now. We do the derivative of the outside, then the inside. The derivative of the inside on these is one over root two. Uh, so there's a one over root two with the sine. There's a one over root two with the cosine. And the derivative of s over root two is also one over root two. I just factored it all out. Each component has one. And so my r prime of s looks like that, which is my t of s. Yay. We'll find our second derivative. Uh, again, chain rule is going to bring out another 1 over root 2. So I just wrote it as 1 over root 2 squared. Uh, this is good. Sine goes to cosine, and cosine goes to negative sine. We now have negative on both of them, back to where we were for the position vector. But the z component is now 0. <clears throat> uh, so I, you know, one over root two squared is one half. I just moved it inside at this point. There's only a couple of them that have it. Let's keep looking at what happens on the next page. Uh, we needed the magnitude of R prime or R double prime. Uh, so I threw the components in, squared them, taking the square root. One half, negative one half squared is one fourth. You will see we get a cosine squared and a sine squared. Uh, so we end up just having the square root of one fourth, which is one half, and that's the magnitude of R double prime. <clears throat> okay. We have what we need. So T of S was just the first derivative. Uh, one over root two, negative sine of S over root two, cosine of S over root two, and one. Uh, we can find N by taking r double prime and dividing it by its magnitude. So where was r double prime? r double prime was right here. We have the one half out front. We can see it right here. We divide it by the one half for the magnitude of r double prime right here. And n cleans up has just negative coefficients on it. And now what, what can we do? I could do T cross N, uh, or I can do the, what I had before, what I was showing with the two derivatives. Uh, I'm gonna do that here because one over R double prime was pretty simple. Uh, it was one half, the magnitude of R double prime is one half. When we put it on the denominator, it actually ends up moving to the top. One half turning the denominator becomes a two. So we're just taking the cross part of R prime cross R double prime, uh, which I have right here, our little vector. So in the, we got the two out front. I'm gonna put little dark lines right here so we can see the X, Y, and Z components a little bit easier. X, Y, Z. Uh, the X component was this, part right here, zero minus this times this, I get negative one over, it's negative, but I'm subtracting it. So positive one over two root two sine of S root over root two. When we look at the K component doing the middle, we got zero minus a negative again. So plus one over root two times that gets me uh, one over two root two cosine of S over root two. But the J component, remember, is negative. So we have that negative right here. And doing K, uh, we're crossing this. I get one over two root two on both of them. And I get a sine squared and a cosine squared. That cleans up, just gives me one over root or one over two root two. I'm going to take the two and multiply it in. Notice 
the two there cancels out with the two in the denominator of each of them. And so my binomial vector is one over root two uh, times sine, negative cosine, and one over root two. I did not do the dot product here to show you that they equal zero because it's already getting to be a long video. You can try it out for yourself and see that it works. Peace. Ooh.